What's up, my ninjas? How we doing tonight? Coming back to you, this time a little bit more sober than the last video. Because like I said last time, I was a little bit stressed out. I had done a uh, Vox session. I was doing some, some singing into my microphone here, into my vocal booth, which I, which I showed on a previous video. And, um, you know, anytime, anytime you record vocals, there's a lot of expectations and distractions and, um, and, and plus I'm always just looking for a reason to drink. Just kidding. But, uh, I will buy a bottle on occasion and partake, have a few shots just, uh, just because why not? And it's good for you in moderation. I read it on the internet, but tonight I'm just toning it down a notch. Worked out today. Uh, of course, I did do the the normal perp scurping routine, but I mean that that's just a health supplement, you know. That's like taking uh, St. John's Wort or uh, I don't know, grinding up some basil in your spaghetti. Um, so you know, tonight I'm just chilling. Got got me a nice cup of coffee here with some uh, chamomile tea in there, you know. So it's it's nice and robust, and it hits you with that that power, but then also it sort of reels it back smooth with the, uh, you know, chamomile's like basically flowers. I'm pretty sure I was smoking it on a previous video from like a year ago. <laughs> yeah, it was about a year ago. No, wait, nine months ago. I'm not great with maths. And so, uh, yeah, so this video, I thought I'd just do a little chit chat, tell you about my activities. I did record uh, vocals again yesterday, and uh, I think I'm done with this song, doing the vocals. And so it's rap vocals and singing vocals, and I usually don't like to sing myself, because sometimes uh, it's it's really hit or miss with me. Um, it, 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 it all depends on, I guess, really what, I think really it depends most on the message. And uh, that, that had me doing a lot of thinking lately, the message, you know. Because like I said, um, from the other night, you know, I tried to hire a, a guy in Los Angeles who is either a real rock star, a retired rock star, or is just currently LARPing as a rock star. But I don't know, the experience wasn't that great. And I don't know, he seemed like one of these people that brags about everything like they do because they're staying busy all the time. But to me, the goal is not to stay busy all the time. I mean, if that's what you want to do. That's great. I mean, maybe you can make more money, get your name out there, your brand, but you got to be doing the basics, right? You got to be getting that quality. And so I was thinking, you know, guy wasn't coming back with uh, too good of stuff. Flashes of brilliance, but some obvious mistakes. And so that's when I just kind of was like, I'll pay you, I'll pay you half and we can just walk, you know, no hard feelings. And so then I'm like, well, now I got to record it or I got to post the job somewhere else. And I'm like, well, I'm going to record it. And so that's why I was a bit stressed out. But I, I did it twice. I hit it twice, two days, and I got enough takes. And I was thinking, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be believable. And um, your sound should make sense, I think. And uh, it's like... Something else I've noticed, because whenever I record vocals, I do multiple days recording the same thing. So, for instance, on the song I just did now, I did four days of recording rap vocals. It sounds like more than what it is, but because my voice is only good for like 30 minutes to an hour, you know, when you're trying to hit like, uh, you know, powerful notes or you're trying to, you know, have some strength. And also, you know, resonate and do all the little tricks and I'm given a great explanation of singing, <laughs> but you know, like rapping. So did four, four days of takes there and it turns out the takes on day two or is probably what I'm going to go with. And what I noticed, because I haven't even really listened to all the takes from day three and day four, but I heard like one or two from day three and day four. And the first thing that jumped out at me was it was like 
focusing on trying to make it sound so just right the way I want it that then you lose the feeling. Then it becomes super technical. And then also when you're trying not to mess up, you're trying, you know, you don't want your voice to to squeak a little bit on a, on a certain uh, word or I don't know. There's all kinds of little, you know, running, run, you know, when you do like a rap verse, especially or, or any line, any vocal line, you know, there's there's like letters and words, consonants, vowels, syllables that you can hit. No problem. Then there's ones that you get hung up on. And, uh, yeah, but what I noticed was on the extra, on the extra days that I did takes, it, it started to become more formulaic and just like going through the motions. And so, uh, I don't know, but also you want to have, you also want to have the ability as an editor and a ranger to have sort of like patches, you know, like if your tire on your bicycle or your car got a flat, you know, you'd want to be able to put some air in it and, and patch it up, you know. So it's good to have extra takes in case you need to, you know, sort of edit over an imperfect word in one of your long phrases or whatever. And that got me to thinking because I've been hearing some cover songs, you know, like at the weight room or uh, like on the strand or whatever. And it's just, it's so, it's so weird. I wonder if people, I wonder, do you notice this in these cover songs? You know, that's like, they take a song like Forever Young from, I guess it's from the eighties and, uh, redo it like to a modern day, sort of like tropical house beat. And then they put us, you know, of course they put some young, like chick singer on it or something like that. And it just doesn't work, in my opinion. It doesn't work because then they're totally off message. The, f the feeling is completely gone, and they're singing those lines. It's like when somebody sings the Star Spangled Banner, and they turn it into like one long, ridiculous, like, all-over-the-place solo, <clears throat> you know? And so it got me to thinking about me doing my takes. And just how doing cover songs, it just doesn't really work. I don't think it works. It's great for getting some buzz on YouTube uh, for aspiring up-and-comers, but it's just, uh, it's like totally off. I mean, the, the words have to, somebody has to inject some life into the words and carry the message across the goal line. <laughs> it can't just be like, I'm singing and I'm spazzing out with my voice and I'm showing you all the little, um, you know, little things I can do with my voice and, oh, you know, it's like, that doesn't work. If you discover that ability and someone who's singing something that's like, has your attention and you're paying attention to the full, the full force, the full energy, then, um, that just sweetens the deal. I'm rambling. Maybe I should go have a drink. No, just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I was thinking about that. And, you know, I've only heard like one, one or two covers, I think, in my life that I thought were better than the originals. Maybe it's because I was, maybe it's just because I was young and stupid. In the case of uh, Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy, right? I'm pretty sure that's a cover. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> but the other one is uh, I Started a Joke by the Bee Gees and then covered by uh, the Wallflowers. And so I thought, I think that's a really great song, but it's also a very super melancholy song. So I don't want to say it's hard to mess that up, but... Anyways, they pulled it off. And in my opinion, that's my favorite song from the Wallflowers. It's like a late 90s band. And uh, I don't even like their other stuff. They have the song about the one headlight thing. I, I don't get it. But I think that's like, in my opinion, that's the best cover song. <clears throat> because the Bee Gees version is like... I don't know. I think I only heard it. I don't know if I heard it a cappella or 
it was performed live on some video and dude sounded like somebody yodeling with their balls cut off. So the wall, the wallflowers redid it and they put some nice like acid base, um, <laughs> in the, in the bass liner. The songs in the movie Zoolander, if you're wondering, if you want, if you want to check it out and the scene in Zoolander, when he looks at the uh, puddle and he's like, who am I? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> or when he walks out of the, the diner in New Jersey. <laughs> Such a great movie. So, yeah, so today, um, after my workout, I was walking through like a park area, saw a stray dog. So I thought I'd go up and say hi. I went up, stray dog, you know, chilling with it for a little bit. It was a bit uh, standoffish. It was a medium sized dog. Looked more like a coyote, fox, wild sort of mountain mini wolf uh, than sort of a regular domestic breed of a dog. That's what you'll find in a lot of these stray dogs and like, depending on where you go in the world. It's kind of cool, you know, it's like, it's like bringing the zoo to you because you get to see sort of like wild-ish breeds of animals and then they just happen to be walking down the sidewalk with you. So anyways, um, this is a nice dog, but uh, definitely very, uh, very damaged psychologically, emotionally. Um, I went up and kind of petted it and it was, it was very still and I didn't know if it was going to like try to snap at me or bite me, but it didn't. And uh, so I petted it a little bit and went and sat down over away from it and and then it kind of came up to me and I petted it. And then I, I, I pulled out like this uh, water bottle from my bag and I go to take a drink and like, like, while well, like opening the bottle and going to take a drink, it like really looked at like what I was holding in my hand. Um, it's like really afraid and dismayed. And it was just like, I was like, damn, that sucks. Because that, that tells me that that dog has been, you know, people have raised their hands to the dog with weapons and sticks and rocks probably. And so it sees a human looking at it or whatever, or picking up something, you know, and it's like probably has a uh, PTSD from dealing with a bunch of, you know, people who, who hates stray dogs around here and um it's unfortunate but uh so i had to make a mental note of that and um so i petted it and i noticed i was like wow dog's pretty uh pretty light around the stomach and chest area you know hasn't been getting a lot of food so i went into a, a local market as they say and uh, bought a bunch of stuff and, uh, and i bought a a big old fat chicken chicken breast fillet raw. And I went out of the market and uh, across the street, went back to the park, and I found the dog. And uh, so I pulled out the the chicken breast fillet, and I throw it at throw it at the dog, you know, uh, right where it's sitting, and it sort of looks at it and looks at me and doesn't do anything. I'm like I'm like eat it, buddy. I'm like eat it. It's for you. And then like doesn't want to eat it and I'm just like so I just sit there chilling. And then it like looks at a, a little bit and, and like tries to bite it and just does, it doesn't doesn't even like really know what to do with it. And um I don't know, that might have been the first raw chicken breast a dog ever ate. Who knows? The first raw chicken. But anyway, so I, I go and pick it up and then I bring it back where I'm sitting and I just start Tearing it to shreds because I didn't have a knife with me or anything. And so I'm like, <laughs> I'm pulling this raw chicken breast apart and, and then uh, like tossing little pieces at it. And so the dog, you know, starts to eat it. And, uh, and I'm, I'm like, I guess it just doesn't have a lot of chewing experience. Uh, we're looking for dogs with more chewing experience. Um, your resume says here. Yeah, so, uh, so the dog, dog comes over a little bit closer to me. And I'm just like pulling off little pieces and now I'm feeding it, feeding it to the dog by hand. And it's just like nice moment. And it's nice to, um, you know, cause there's only a dollar or two, but it's, it's just nice to, to be, I don't know, like a counselor, 
you know, to a street dog for like 15, 30 minutes, give it a big meal, you know, something really nutritious for it. So it can, so it doesn't have to feel bad, you know, about being hungry or something. And as far as being homeless goes, or not having like a roof over, over one's head to sleep. I mean, uh, I mean, that does suck, but there's, there's lots of, lots of hiding places where dogs can go or they'll sleep out in the afternoon, you know, on the grass. And usually they're pretty safe, but they do have, they do have a, um, catch and a catch neuter and release program and a tagging program. So in this part of the world, so, uh, there are public measures for animal control. So to be a stray dog in this part of the world, you know, it's, uh, it's stressful. And then you got to, and then you got to deal with the riffraff, you know, um, raising weapons at you. And so anyways, it was just nice. It was nice to feed, uh, feed a dog by hand and, uh, sh show it some love. And I think it really just wanted some love. It, it, it wasn't even that hungry. And honestly, I, I think it might've had some, uh, cognitive issues. But also, I mean, that might have something to do with the breed because I've noticed with like sort of like wild fox type dogs, coyote fox type dogs, they have a they have a a very different demeanor from just like a regular uh, breed of a dog, you know. Even like a stray dog of sort of a what you'd consider a normal breed, and they 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 spend a lot of time like. I don't know. They almost act kind of like uh, like gypsies or something. Kind of like a little sly, a little goofy, but not in a bad way. It's just their way, you know. <laughs> I have a lot of experience with uh, with canines and their cousins, and um, that's that's just the way I like to keep it. The other day, I fed um, I found a different stray dog. Actually, it found me on the beach after my workout, and I just saw it, and you know, we made eye contact. It was such a special moment. I just kind of clapped it a little bit at it and it sort of came over. This one was more, this was a big one. It was more of like a mountain wolf type Labrador mix. But it had that, it had a uh, very Labrador-esque way of approaching someone sort of like shyly and like, but a good spirited and, and Labradors have that, that face. Uh, they have like this big sort of smile grin they do and they sort of like hold their head down like this. But very friendly. It came over. We hung out like a couple of bros, total bros on the beach, just hanging out. And then I saw it the next day, and I and I gave it a bunch of chicken scraps from a chicken I'd cooked. <laughs> a big whole bag of like chicken bones and and scraps and stuff. So that's what I do, you know. That's how I roll. And um, you know, works for me. So. Uh, what else? Let's see here. <sighs> That's tasty. My headphone quest continued. I am the hobbit of headphones, cheap headphones. So my headphones did break last time on True Grid Productions. <laughs> my headphones broke, so I had to get a new pair. And I didn't want to get some Dre Beats headphones dog you know so you can hear the music just how the artists be hearing the music and shit like it says on the box <laughs> only i'm pretty sure artists are not using beats headphones in the studio <laughs> they're probably using like what is it called sennheiser 200 dollars headphones but i got these headphones headphones for around 20 bucks a piece so i'll just cycle through them really fast these cost about 23 and these are like six-year-old models, you know. They're not great. This is like 23 bucks. And uh, that one had not great low end and not a lot of power. Uh, but these have 40-millimeter drivers, whatever that means. Then you got these. Cyrox. These are uh, from Turkey, but I'm pretty sure they're just from China. And then they put a sticker on it. But I do appreciate the the whimsy lime green. And these are like super base. So the way I saw it was like, I found these in a grocery store in a market. A market for English speaking people. And um, 
these are only 15, like 14 bucks. I was like, I'll give them a shot. They say like super base. So I know it's going to be pretty much mostly low end and low mids and everything else would be crappy. And sure enough, it was. But if you need to, you know, make sure that your sub bass is coming through and your own song, can't beat that. And finally today, finally, the $23 solution that actually works. And these are the these are the headphones I was talking about from from that pre, from a previous headphone video, and uh, these are solid. And these actually say studio monitor on them, and not just to be fancy. They actually have a really good, good clear and powerful sound. I don't have to turn it all the way up to eleven. And um, the thing was, it threw me off when I first saw them because it's really. These, I mean, you can't, maybe you can't tell through this video, but it's like really cheap, flimsy plastic. And I had a pair of these, you know, from 10 years, probably prior to this model, you know, eight to 10 years prior. And I, I don't think I'm just making it up. I swear those were, I mean, it's still plastic, still nothing special on the, on the design aesthetic, but you know, it seemed like it was more durable. But it seems to have about the same components, which is all I really care about, the sound. So my headphone woes are over. And it only costs me about 60 US dollars. And so that's money I saved over buying Beats headphones, which I read reviews for. And said the, the friggin' the jack broke. And if the jack breaks on you, you're screwed. Because then you gotta find like a super super smart technician you gotta go to geek squad and get them to solder you some wires probably not anyway this video is probably gonna cut out soon i think i'm going way over the limit here but uh yeah i just wanted to film a saturday evening a fireside chat and also while i love to party i wanted to show you this uh less belligerent side of me because, I don't know, I just don't want to be seen as, it's not, it's not like I really care about what people think about me. It's just that it's so easy, it's so easy to convince yourself to take a couple of shots and film a YouTube video. How about that? Take the edge off, you know what I mean? Skirt a little perp, have a cigarette, and pretty soon you're, um, you know, you're advertising all of the vices. <laughs> but um all right well i'm gonna i'm gonna go hit up a mix session hot and heavy because i hope to have the song ready for you here in the next week or two wrapping it all up pun intended so i hope you enjoy your saturday night and um have you a nice cup of something if you're into it you know I'm, I know I'm about to go start some small fires over here, if you know what I mean. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Peace it out, ninjas.